So I'll be giving a bit of an introduction on electric vehicle policies and regulations on a very generic uh, level. I would like to start, off, start us off uh, by asking what challenges can policy makers actually tackle with e-mobility? And in a way, it is very important to first identify the challenges that can be addressed through electric mobility and also set strategic goals in order to develop um, the right policies. For example, in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, it is important to increase the share of renewable energy sources in order to ensure electric vehicles run on green electricity. Another example would be in order to reduce congestion and improve accessibility, one-to-one -one replacement of vehicles will not be sufficient. Thus, we would be requiring other complementary mobility measures, such as introducing higher capacity modes in combination with electric mobility. Now, these examples illustrate that it is important to reflect on the intended outcomes um, and, and specific policy targets when we are reflecting and developing uh, on the policies uh, that we would like to implement to foster the uptake of electric mobility. Uh, one of the solutions partners, uh, Ruprecht Consult, actually carried out a campaign program in Europe, which was called the Elliptic Factor 100 campaign. Um, and the campaign was very interested, interesting because it reflected on the question why it is so important to focus on the electrification of public transport. And uh, Ruprecht actually did uh, the, the one by one comparison between cars and an 18 meter bus. And as you can see on the slide, a car is being driven for less than one hour a day, while a bus uh, is in operations from 12 to 16 hours a day. And also uh, because of the tonnage, the annual fuel consumption of buses is obviously much higher than for cars and therefore also the emissions. Hence, and, and therefore the conclusion that you can draw from this slide is that you can, that if you incentivize the uptake of electric buses, you can get savings that are equivalent to 100 electric cars. So again, the question here is, what kind of e-mobility policy do we want to implement? And what is it that we want to incentivize by bringing forward um, regulations? So let's have a quick look at how e-mobility can steer changes in travel behavior and contribute to more efficient use of resources. Um, e-mobility has the potential to enhance multi multimodality and the resilience of the mobility network. Um, it also gives us the chance um, to give priority to more sustainable modes. Um, it also provides us with an alternative and new mobility services that are more effectively addressing uh, the user's needs. And it can also help us to improve the cost effectiveness of new mobility solutions by exploiting synergies and service integration. On this slide, you can see this idea of multimodality being illustrated. Um, electric mobility can really be a means to provide multimodal and door-to-door -door alternatives for users to avoid being dependent uh, too much on, on, on the private cars. And therefore, electric mobility can really enable a shift away from the cars to multimodality and more sustainable transport alternatives. We should therefore develop our policies with these opportunities in mind to fully exploit the potential of electric mobility. Looking at the policy instruments to, to mainstream electric mobility, we wanted to illustrate a few examples. Um, what is important to note is that the right uh, policies need to be developed and adopted at national and local levels supporting the electrification of vehicles as, and as mentioned preferably with a focus of uh, public and shared vehicle fleets, which are the most cost-effective options among the electrification strategies. Now, ensuring that the deployment of electric vehicles and infrastructure fits within a sustainable urban mobility paradigm is very crucial to achieve the full benefits of this transition. From this graph, you can see that policies and strategies can on the one side generate um, higher demand for electric mobility, but on the other side, they can also stimulate the supply of e-mobility solutions. And you will also see that they can be implemented on a national or a local level. 
Starting with the national level, national authorities have a crucial role to, role to play by setting the targets for the penetration of electric vehicles, subsidy schemes, and other legal and financial incentives, as well as also procurement programs to kickstart the demand and stimulate uh, the industry to increase the availability of electric vehicles on the market. In addition, a combination of fuel pricing and removal of fossil fuel subsidies, as well as differentiated vehicle and emission taxations, can really help to boost energy efficiency in the transport sector and steer the purchase and deployment of electric vehicles. On the local level, it is very important uh, to strengthen the planning capacity um, of the governments for sustainable urban mobility planning and uh, making sure that electric mobility is well reflected in sustainable urban mobility plans with targets um, and, and uh, measurable indicators. There's a nice guidance uh, developed by one of the Solutions Plus partners, uh, Ruprecht, um, that developed uh, kind of some uh, guidelines and topic guides where, where one of them is on electrification. On the local level, it's also important to look at land use plans, making sure that um, we're, we're, we are also working on, on compactness and on mixed, mixed land uses, which can also facilitate higher uptake of, of electric mobility. And uh, lastly, it's also very important to work with private developers, ensuring that e-mobility considerations are made in any new housing and building uh, developments that are taking place in cities. On the fiscal side, um, it's important to look at uh, financial incentives for e-mobility that could, for example, be lower parking fees uh, for people that, that are parking electric uh, vehicles. There can also be incentives uh, for model integration, for example, through smart ticketing of um, electric uh, micromobility options, for example, in, um, in integration with uh, the public transport systems of cities. But there's also opportunities around uh, public procurement for e-mobility uptake, for example, as part of, as part of a municipal vehicle fleets. If you look at institutional and regulatory um, issues. There is a lot of opportunities around vehicle access to central areas and cities and low emission zones. As mentioned before, there's also a lot of opportunities around uh, parking management and ensuring that uh, the fees that are collected from parking, for example, can be reinvested um, in sustainable mobility modes. And there are further um, opportunities and the further potential uh, around parking status and the requirements for charging infrastructure for um, electric vehicles. One uh, example that uh, should, also be, um, should also be implemented um, and considered more in, in, on a city level context are transit hubs, where cities should be supported in the creation of those intermodal transit hubs that enable the seamless connectivity between the mass transit and possibly electric feeder services and any uh, charging facilities should be made um, against the, the principle of interoperability to make sure that different modes can utilize uh, the same pieces of infrastructure for cost, cost effectiveness of uh, the charging infrastructures. In terms of the charging infrastructure developments, um, it's important um, that we are adopting uh, charging standards. And as mentioned before, the interoperability is a very important aspect here. We should also look at impetuses for an initial rollout of a publicly accessible charging infrastructure that would really facilitate a, a faster and ac accelerated uptake of immobility. E and um, we should look at the deployment of publicly accessible chargers in cities and along highway networks um, that would help us also to work on the, on the range anxiety that is often a barrier for electric mobility uptake. Uh, lastly, uh, it's important to mention that uh, communication should not be forgotten when we're looking at um, developing policy and regulations. It's very important to involve the stakeholders and, and especially the citizens in early stages of, of the discussions of e-mobility deployment. Um, that could, for example, be done by awareness raising um, when we, for example, imp implement uh, low emission zones. Uh, we, could, we could test them in temporary uh, events such as car-free days and, and, and have a discussions 
with the citizens and the, and the neighborhoods and the residents in the neighborhoods on the benefits of having those low emission zones, the benefits of electric mobility and so on. So engaging the citizens and also, uh, let's say the, the innovators in cities is, is very important uh, for a quick uptake. Having said all this and knowing that there is so many policy and regulatory measures uh, that are available to us, I think an important question is, is uh, to ask why are we not there yet? And it's obviously not as easy to implement certain uh, policies and regulatory frameworks. We recently did an, an analysis of an overview of the key barriers that are yet hindering the de development of electric mobility. And if you look at um, the side of uh, policy, regulatory and institutional frameworks, we still find a lot of um, barriers, for example, around um, the coordination and, and the common vision with, within public institutions and external players. We still see that often there is a lack of restrictions on fossil fuel vehicles. And without those restrictions, it's, it's, a, it's um, more complicated to, to implement and accelerate the mobility. We also do lack data on air pollution which would always be a good evidence base to foster the uptake of immobility. E but if you don't know the levels, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to make an evidence uh, case for, for implementing an immobility e policy. And we also see that there is still a lot of conflict over space allocation and space use between conventional uh, cars and more sustainable modes. With that, I would like to end my presentation.